So welcome back for another video guys. Um, I'm sorry about all the poor lighting. It is late at night here, it's around about 10 o'clock-ish. Uh, so if you are watching this on the replay, just hit the thumbs up button because why not? But we've got a few things planned. Um, loads of people have been commenting saying they want to see me live late at night because normally my live streams are quite early in the morning and stuff like that. So I figured I'd come live late at night for a, a load of people that don't get a chance to see me in, at night. Hi everyone who's coming in, Milo Herps. Uh, Hadley Arachnids, thanks for coming in today. But yeah, we've just got a fair few little bits and bobs to do today. I'm just going to see how it goes. Like I said, this is mainly for those people that can't or that don't come on to the random live streams that I do throughout the middle of the day. And I, I'm, I am sorry, I say this every time. Um, I'm sorry if I don't read your comments or your messages, but the live stream goes dead fast. There's loads of people on. And uh, welcome, everybody. Um, dear, 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 dear. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Scales 13, thanks for coming in. There's Hugo's enclosure. It's late at night now, it's about 10 o'clock at night, so his lights are off. He's fast asleep in his burrows, and that's about it. Uh, the reptile system sticker hasn't been drawn yet. Um, for anybody who wants to know about that, that's the Northern Exotics show, that little show that I'm putting on every Friday at um, 10 o'clock. <coughs> uh, what is it? Great. British mean I don't know our time it's the whoever just one of the comments they'll win one of the stickers I've actually got the stickers over there I'll send you over there and have a look but I'll pick that out just before I do the recording for the next one so for anyone who wants to ju jump in on the Northern Exotic show all you got to do is whack a picture up on Instagram and stick the hashtag the Northern Exotic show it'll go onto a separate page and once a week we just go through and have a fun we're trying to get some Christmassy sort of ones for this week I think there's only around about five entries gone into this one uh, can you show some snakes? I have three corn snakes, one boa. Uh, Hadley arachnids. Yep, yeah, I've actually got, or I'm going to be looking, I've been working on popcorn at the minute, simply because popcorn went to a stage where he was unhandleable. Oh, here we go. Debia colony's doing really well, but my females have started dropping in numbers. Feed your males off. You don't want it to get too overcrowded in there. Greenwich Mean Time. That's the one, Don. Thanks for ever so much. Speaking of doobie and roaches, though, guys, I have got um, a box. I've, I've literally just finished work, so I've just come through. And uh, I've got a box come through the post. Can anyone read that sticker? Loose live insects. So um, I'll have to go through that one and uh, cut that open and have a look and get that going. But, yeah, we'll start getting going after I've had a mouthful of tea. So first, welcome everybody. Let's have a run through some of the comments and just say hi to a few of you. Um, how you Dean? Oh, we've got Gandalf here. We have got royalty. Scales 13. Don. Welcome guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome one and all. Right, shall we get started? We'll do a little unboxing first. But I am not going to unbox this package on my lap and show you all and everything because it's loose inverts so for that let's go to the reptile room shall we if i can now you're going to see a lot of this sort of stuff and jiggling around and stuff and again it's night time here so you might get the lights and stuff in in the uh shots but we shall have a play because why not hey the lighting's a little bit better in here let's adjust the tr see i'm going to be adjusting these tripod legs um a fair bit for you and just bits like that. Let's uh, spin the camera around. Oh, so. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. While I'm in here, see that enclosure over there? That one just there. Right. Let me talk you through that because that's got to have some stuff done to it. And um, ah. so, what's happened with this is, right, that piece of cork bark was a hide and the female. Brachypalma homori, Brachypalma uh, brachy albi pelosum, that's no longer a Brachypalma, it's now a cow boob, uh, titty cow, whatever you want to call it. If anyone can actually pronounce that or spell that, stick it down in the comments. Eh, it's a lovely little joke. But anyway, she burrowed in and then blocked herself in. So I'm going to have to go digging for her. I've gave her about three weeks and she's just not come out of that little enclosure thing yet. So um, I'm going to have to go digging for her. I've got myself a lovely little tub to stick her in. So I'll do a digging. Uh, sort of 
I say a big enclosure upgrade, it won't really be that big. Is she in Primo? I haven't got a clue. Uh, she shouldn't be, but yeah, we'll have a look. Like I do say, guys, I am sorry um, if I do miss any of your comments or anything like that. Check that out, Secret Santa got a swing. Not Secret Santa, the elf on the shelf. <laughs> but, right, move some of this stuff so that I can get into my Dubia colony. I can't wait. Did anyone see my last video where I did get um, a new heat map for these guys? But I've got to change out their food and stuff like that. Let's bring you a bit closer, shall we? And I think that might be about as close as I'm going to get this. Whoa! There we go. Right. Right, 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 right. So they've still got loads of their dry food, still got some moist food. And quite frankly, We've got a load of dubia roaches. Check that one out, guys. Fresh out of malt. That's what the dubia roaches look like when they're fresh out of malt. They're bright white. Just like beetles when they first hatch out and stuff like that. Oh, we've got some babies down there. Oh, here we go. Let's have a look. Yeah, and then, so they go from white to that sort of colour. And then, obviously, they'll turn to the darker one. We've got some babies in there. I've only just cleaned these out as well. But, this sort of... Start bodging this back to yeah, I've done it wrong. Right, I'm gonna leave it like that because I've got some dubia roaches to go in there. Right, I need my knife. Where is my knife? And where is the box? Right, 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 right. Again, sorry if I am missing any comments. This is two boxes, so I don't mind cutting it straight down the middle. Everyone gets scared when they, I get a knife in my hand. I never understood that because I've never cut myself. I've been bit by snakes more than I've actually cut myself. Right, let's have a go and just see if I can get this done without any escaping. Now, I can't remember how many I ordered. I think I only really ordered 100 large or 100 medium. I'm not too sure, to be fair. But, anyone wants... Everyone keeps saying, where do I get my um, DB roaches from? I don't know how well you can see that. Buzzard, reptiles and aquatics. It's the cheapest place I've found from. And um, let's face it, dubia roaches are dubia roaches, aren't they? The cheapest place you can find has got to be the best. Ah. Let's lift the camera up so you can see, because I've just realised I'm not actually in shot. So that's a bit crap. I am, okay, yeah, now I can see why people get scared when I have a knife. Come on. Is any cut? Um, there we go. Right. I want more sticky. Where's the sticky? What? Right. It shouldn't be this hard to unbox. Imagine if I'd done a live unboxing. It'd be boring as hell. Right, there's that side done. And... Has that side been done now? I don't know. If it is, it is. It is. I don't know. <laughs> Again, guys. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. There's about 50. There's more than 50 in there, but that's the sort of size I want because I can grow these guys up. Hopefully the majority are females. There we go. Yeah, I can grow those guys up so that I know for a fact when they do mature into adults, they've not been bred before. So I will get a full breeding system out of them because the dubia do roach will only breed nine times or they'll only give off nine litters. There's another one. So I'll whack all these in here, let them all settle in. Hopefully they'll get some food. They'll come in a bit dehydrated, they always do. Um, just because of shipping and stuff like that. Ah. I've got um, a little unboxing knife, which I got off uh, Peter Webster. Oh, oh, we've got a freshly malted one in this group, guys. Can you see the white one? Yeah. And that is, I think I've got more than 100 there. I don't know if I ordered 150, but there's probably about 150 in there. That's that one done. So, I've got loads and loads more dubia roaches in there. Everyone keeps asking, why am I putting more dubia roaches in? And it's simply because I want to start breeding these and potentially make a bit of a profit off them. Or well, not so much a profit, but an experience probably sell them at the shows or sell them to friends or something like that yeah i'm not too sure i'm not really planned that far away i've got a fair few males in here so i'll have to properly go through it and check 
what the ratio between male to female is, which isn't a big problem really. It's more, um, I'll put some more food in for those babies. It's more, um, <coughs> what was I even talking about? Oh yeah, I'll feed the big ones, the adults off. Try some of that new buzzard herpy mix. Why not? Yeah, I'll feed them big males off to the uh, Hugo the Boss monitor or Savannah monitor if you're American. But there's that one done. Oh, oh we've got Millie's out for a little stretch. I'd say anybody should start a DBA colony just for the sheer fun or the experience. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I've really got to go through my mealworms because they're an absolute disgrace at the moment. I've never had any allergy issues with dubia roaches. However, I have with the mealworms. They're just horrible, dusty things. I've put my uh, superworms down there, but they're not doing too great either. Uh, yeah, I've seen the unicorn poop thing. Um, I got some for the missus' um, daughter because she's like unicorn mad. Right, there's those bits done. Let's head back into the other room and have a little play with there ah, there we go hello everybody I don't know why I've just if you hear a buzzing sound it's because um, I, what I might get or I might look at getting popcorn out in a bit so I've um, got the little electric heater on just up in the air ambient temperature in the room ready for that because big story with him <coughs> <coughs> He's become unhandleable. Every time I've gone in there, he's struck for me. I've put, you can see that branch that's there that he's leaning on. I put that there to stop him going behind that Buddha thing. Just simply because when he's behind there, it becomes virtually impossible to get hold of him. So I put it there to stop him. And guess what? He's just lying around on top of it. And I don't know why he actually loves to be in that corner. Because that's his cold side. I mean, he's got to hide on the hot side, which I am going to be making a lot better. He's got all the heat over that side. But... He just loves it being in there. So I'm going to potentially wait for the air and ambient temperature to get a bit more uh, better in this room. And um, once it gets up, I might have a play with him. We shall see what happens then. You've got uh, Rosie. She's uh, sticking her head out. She's like, hey. Oh, it looks like there's a bit of shed in there as well. So I'll have to go in there in a bit and uh, have a little stretch on that. Hiya, Lewis. How's it going, buddy? Oh, right. Time to have a bit of a cup of tea. I don't know why you sat all the way up there that high. Uh, I'll just lower the legs down on the tripod. This is the thing with live streaming with a tripod. You're constantly having to adjust everything. Ha. So has anybody got any plans for the new year? Any New Year's resolutions? Any goals? Absolutely anything like that? I've got loads and loads and loads of goals and bits and bobs like that to sort out absolutely mental some of the stuff we've got going on um, mainly that enclosure just there that's the big leopard gecko build um, I'll show you that in a second because I've got obviously I've got all this stuff which is what come in my last package that I did get uh, it's a few reptile systems heating stuff uh, I've got plants and all that sort of stuff it's just the leopard gecko setup that I've got to build obviously there's the incubator down there and I've got that, so I'll show you, I'll run you through that in a second. Let's have a quick look on some of the actual comments that are coming through. Simon's eggs late, eight legged free cow. Hey buddy, how's it going mate? I've not seen you for ages, we need to get together. Uh, Victoria Elizabeth, welcome. Oh, what spiders are you going to be getting? Lewis, I know Lewis has just got a fair few new spiders and stuff like that. I've got to go on the hunt and try and find one of my spiders, to be fair. Uh, but when I find her, I'm going to make her a new enclosure up and everything. Because that one she's in now, she's just... But then again, I don't want to just disturb her if she's in pre -mold, Which I never even thought about. Check out my absolute pathetic excuse of a Christmas tree. Yeah. Oh... Idiotic is that obviously I've got some camera equipment up there and stuff like that. There's Rosie. How idiotic is that? <laughs> it's a bit pathetic. And then obviously everyone will know that little chain thing up there because that was made last year by me and my lad and it's still up there now and it hasn't come down yet. 
it is what it is, I guess. But yeah, right. So I've always, I've started to get, or I've been, obviously it costs a lot of money to do big enclosure builds. So look, I've only sat down for five seconds and I've got to adjust all the tripod legs again. Because I'm so intelligent, you see. Right, is that going to be enough? Let's, uh, my boobies. Ooh. Right, I don't know why I keep saying, right, 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 right. So yeah, that's the big enclosure build. Do you know what? I'm just going to take, you're going rogue now. Oh, there we go. Right. So far, we've got, obviously, a couple of plants, a couple of succulent plants, Christmas cards, a couple of succulent plants, which I've never been that good at keeping succulents. Obviously, I've got a few more to come. I'm going to be getting them from Bioactive Herbs. Um, the heat mat, obviously, they're the bits I've just got in the reptile systems order. Not that. That's just something else I've got to play with. Um, heat cable, DP projector, or infrared projector, sorry. And yeah, but this is the enclosure, and again, I've not done anything to it because I'm just getting together all the stuff that I actually need to do it. A uh, big four foot enclosure. I've got to get the obviously the UVB just there. I've got to get that all installed. I've got to get some more ventilation put in. I've got up there, actually, I'll do that while I'm here. I've got to test that the obviously the deep heat projector on that fit in there see how far down it comes because i may have to you can see this piece of wood here well that's because there's a massive hole up there you can see the hole so i may have to lift that piece of wood higher to get the bulb that little bit higher so i've got that to do in there and that should be quite nice when it's done you should see the plans we've got for this actual enclosure um let's do this right there we go so we've got instead of doing it just Stick some dirt down the bottom and then stick some hides in. We've got a full custom background, which is a challenge in itself because I've still got to keep the ventilation in. I can't block all the ventilation off because there's obviously vents at the top there as well. I've got to figure out what that plate is because I've never seen that before. I don't know what that is. I've got to sort out the lighting, which is obviously that deep heat projector or infrared projector, sorry. Um, I've got the full... Um, I don't even know what you call it. Like I've got a background build in mind. It's going to be a full wraparound style background. Let's move it back up. Yeah, so it's going to be a full background going all the way up the wall. So they've got loads of climbing area. But I still need to make loads of space for those plants up there. Plus a few, few more that I've got my eyes on. There's going to be... I'm aiming for around about 10 hides. Because obviously this is going to have two female leopard geckos in it. But then I've got to keep in mind, I've got to have on the cool side of the enclosure some um, a place to put a lay box for obviously when they're breeding and they're laying their eggs. So I've got to figure out how I can get a lay box in there, but still keep it covered by all of the sort of surrounding areas. It's just going to be an awkward one to sort of hide a lay box. So I can't really see it because it's butt ugly, but so they can easily access easily access it but then so i can easily access it once a week to check for eggs it's just a massive massive complication all in one sort of area but that's the four foot enclosure it's not a pretty enclosure especially if i have to lift up this piece of wood a bit more then it's just going to make it that little bit extra sort of ugly ah. sorry i'm just adjusting the monopod if i can figure out there we go but that's the deep heat project i'm going to use in there so I'll oof, get it out and just put it in and just see see how it looks because obviously I want to keep it at a decent height away from the animals but keep it at the perfect height for the animals if you know what I mean. I want it at the optimum so they get the best out of the actual light itself. So uh, we'll just have a play and see what happens. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you. Oof. I don't know why I keep saying boof or anything like that. It's just random as anything. But eh, if you're enjoying the live stream, hit the thumbs up button. Just because, why not? Yeah. I love the packaging on all these sorts, of, these sorts of products. But how amazing is that? First off, is this E27? Yes. Just. 
see how... Oh, that might be good enough, actually. I've got to try and work a um, thermostat into the actual... Oh, work a thermostat cable into the actual um, background as well, which is going to be entertaining. I don't think I'm going to need to change the height of it. I'll have to obviously measure it out, and I'm going to have to measure it more when the actual background's in, because let's say, let's face it, if a basking spot's there, that's going to be too close to it. And there's going to be more than one basking spot, more than one area for them to actually bask on. But then I've got to also check the heat gradient that runs through the actual enclosure. Um, but it seems to fit up there quite nicely. I'm quite impressed at the minute. But, ah, there we go. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's gonna work perfectly. I'm tempted with the UVB. I tend to find everyone sticks the UVB strip bulbs on the actual back of the enclosure. But then when I'm sticking the camera in, it's just gonna blur out because of where it is and the light and stuff like that. So I'm thinking of running the cables quite neatly through the entire length width of the enclosure and put the bulb just behind this piece here so it projects in. Obviously, reflector on the inside there and just reflect the UVB in. That should be quite entertaining. I'm also looking forward to seeing how Donna, our blazing blizzard leopard gecko, does in the UVB. I wonder what they'd actually look like in there. I can't wait to get them in. Let's go and have a look at the leopard geckos. Put that up there. Uh, or, or up there, anyway. Let's go and have a look at the leopard geckos. Yeah. There we go. Picked up the tripod without tightening down the screws. <laughs> oh, God. I, I really need to do something in here because it's disgusting. Oh, I know what I can show you. Um, look at him fast asleep in there. No, oh, I need to clean that glass for us for sure. <laughs> <coughs> oh, actually, no. Do you know what? Yeah, I'll show you show you the leopard geckos because everybody loves. A good leopard gecko, don't they? Everybody loves a leopard gecko. Uh, but first, I'll drop down the tripod. This is the problem with lowering trees. <laughs> oh, God. Also, guys, I want to thank every single one of you because we've just tipped over, uh, I think, 3,900 subscribers. That's like mental. That's, it's mind-blowing. That really is. Right. Obviously, we've got three hides there. We've got a cork bark hide at the back. Got a couple of hides down here, and we've got the big lay box in the back. And I've just heard a bang in the front room, and I have no idea what it's from. Oh, well, we'll go and check it in a bit. Oh, there's Donna. No, it's not, it's Millie. So, we're just, it's always good to give them a little once over every now and then just to check how they're doing. She's very alert, her eyes are fine. Yep, both eyes are fine. Front toes are fine. I just love to give them a good once over. Back toes are fine. Look at that chunky tail. She's she was the first leopard gecko we ever got. It's, oh, ah, and there's Donna just popped out, popped her out out the back. See, this is the one. Oh, boof, yeah. So Donna's the one that I don't know how to react or how she will react to um, UVB lighting because she has got the slightly darker eyes. She's got no black pigment on her actual skin. So I don't know how her body will absorb the actual rays. And it's just, I don't know. Should we see if she'll come out? She's always normally the sort of, ow, the bitey one. <laughs> oh, don't jump out, girl. There we go. See what I mean? She's just white all the way along and I don't know how she's going to react to the UVB lighting I think she's just seen herself on the camera <laughs> she's amazing I'll get that hide back in and drop her back in there you go hey, do you not want to go off girl Let's spin it around so you can see I try not to keep my head shadow in it too much but but she's got sensitive eyes, so even this daylight bugs her eyes. You going in, girl? 
There you go. Right, what I'm going to do, because at the minute with them, I'm trying to sort of, so to speak, fatten them up, sort of. Just because, obviously, it's coming up close to the breeding season. That, that, that's really bugging me. She, that, Like I said, that was the hide, and she's burrowed her way out, or she's blocked herself in. So I really want to, and she's done that weeks ago, so I'm really trying to sort of figure out where she is. Uh, that centipede's dug herself in as well. But what I've got to do, or actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a tub. Because I've got to get some, I've got to do that tedious job of getting mealworms out of the mealworm breeding farm so that I can feed to them guys. Yep, that tub will do. I've got, yeah, I've got some in here, so I'll just grab this. And I'll go in the front room and do it. Because obviously a lot of people don't realise I breed mealworms, I breed, I breed basically everything. Crickets, dubias, mealworms, everything. But see if I can get my head shadow out of it. There's the actual mealworms, or just part of the mealworms. There's loads of mealworms in there, there's loads of beetles. I've just sort of left that one to do its own sort of thing. And it's working. It really is working. Let's spin you around so you can see me. Boo! Uh, right, oh, I've got to adjust the legs again. So bear with me. Boo! Right. Sorry about the this. <laughs> There we go. So, all I've got to do basically, this is a boring bit of the actual video, because I've just got to get mealworms out of that tub and stick them in another tub, obviously get them calcified and then drop them in with the leopard geckos, because the male needs feeding as well. I could do it getting quite a few out actually, because I might give uh, Diego some mealworms, he's not had them for a long time, but that'll be tomorrow when he wakes up, because obviously he's diurnal. Let's have a look at some of the comments, because I've not done the comments for a while. Oh God, I haven't done any. <laughs> What more if he's done it? She's blazing blizzard, mate. Uh, anyone doing fatal fangs too? What is fatal fangs? I've seen loads on there. It's absolutely... I've just I've seen loads of people mention it. I think it's something that um, Sam's doing. I'm not too sure what it is. But uh, it's like that um, hot chilli sauce challenge thing. I got nominated for that, but you've got to feed 10 tarantulas. And then for the ones that don't feed, you've got to take a chilli dip thing. Mate, I've got four tarantulas. Four, five. Don't know. I've got. I'm not got. I've not got ten tarantulas to do it. So I was gonna twist it up, do it with reptiles and stuff like that. Then I saw the price of that the bomb hot sauce. And I thought, nah, not gonna happen. Not today. <laughs> uh, right. What have I got to do? I'm gonna do these mealworms. So guys, this is where. We can start getting a bit interactive with you guys. I'd love to hear from you guys what your plans are for 2020. Are you going to be getting any new animals? Are you going to be focusing on anything specific? I've been... <coughs> oh, I'm going to be in the hospital Thursday and Friday this week. So I'm taking in a big, massive book. And I'm going to properly write down everything, plan everything down. Because that's what I do. I plan at the start of the year and then work forward sort of thing. And that's what I've done. And that's what's growing the subscribers I, I would imagine that's what's got my passion set on bioactivities and more enrichment and finding more information about natural habitats uh, so this year I should be able to put that into action I really can't wait to work on that mm. yes guys I smoke an e -cig. when it doesn't kill me <laughs> I mean like I say I've got that big build just there my big leopard gecko build now I'm sorry if I actually can I lower the camera down so you can I can look at the screen these are so impromptu, these um, live streams are weird. <laughs> oh. There you go, if I lower the, lower the camera down, we could do stuff. Let's have a look at the comments. Uh, I'm looking at a chameleon. Yeah, I've, I'm, I've got my eye set on a Jackson's chameleon or a Jackson's chameleon pair. Um, which I've, I've had my eye on them for a long, long time. Hiya, Peter. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> Ooh, 
have you ever sat down, Peter, and actually physically counted how many um, invertebrates you have? Because I know you have a lot. But I'd love to sort of just sort of dive into it a little bit and just sort of see. I really want to get down to your facility, Peter, and um, do some filming down there. I want to check your reptiles more than your inverts because obviously I love my reptiles. Don't get me wrong, I love invertebrates too, but reptiles are my sort of forte, so to speak. Oh, and that's not one. There's more beetles in here than I actually thought. I should really spend more time cleaning these guys out. Tortoise Tarzan, hey mate, how's it going? I didn't know you were here either. I should spend more time on these uh, upgrades. <laughs> Max Snow Eclipse are beautiful. You can do so much with them when you're breeding as well. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've got a few isopods, Victoria. I've got Tropical Orange, um, which I've only just got them in a mystery box. Hugo's Enclosure, that is loaded with Tropical Greys, Powder Blues, Purples, and uh, Dwarf Whites. I've got Dwarf Whites in nearly every enclosure, to be fair. Um, just because they're small, I can't really put too much bigger ones in Hugo's enclosure because every single time I put some in there, he just goes nuts and just rips them all apart trying to find them. And the enclosure is basically ripped to pieces. Then, <laughs> um, I love that. I asked Peter Webster that ages ago. I said, How many inverts have you actually got? Uh, like last year, and he said, Oh, I stopped counting when I got to 300. <laughs> oh. Oh, I can't wait to see that happening, Simon. Oh, there we are. Yeah, I've got dairy cows as well. Um, I've recently got them off Lewis. Um, I've never really had much luck with dairy cow isopods, to be fair. Um, I did to start with, and then they sort of died off. But then I put that down to my humidity. Because what I've started to do with my dairy cows now is do a humidity gradient throughout their little enclosure. So it's more humid on one side than the other. And that seems to be really working well. They're thriving like... Ah! Just dropped a mealworm into my sofa. That's going to be fun when that beetle pops out. So this has got a fair few Damascus beetles in this colony. Oh, there we go. Some big mealworms in here. Can't wait to give these to the girls. Right, again, I, I wasn't paying attention to the uh, chat feature there. Huh. I've got... Um, thanks ever so much, Victoria. I do have um, enough at the moment. But I might take you up on that offer for the girls behind me. Um, because, believe it or not, I've done a lot of digging into um, arid clean-up crews. Because I think within the hobby... Especially with the arid side of the hobby, so your bearded dragons, uh, leopard geckos, all that sort of stuff. Everyone's going bioactive, and they're all going. Oh, there's you can't really get natural cleanup crews and stuff like this. And I've had a good deep dive into that. Spoke to some people from Afghanistan, spoke to some people from Iran um, and Australia, and from just from what I've seen from other Australians and stuff like that. And it doesn't seem that they have a lot of what we would traditionally class as a cleanup crew. There's the likes of isopods and springtails. Instead, they have flies. Which is, why didn't we think, why didn't I think of that sooner? They have a lot of flies as their cleanup crew. I'm not being funny, I'm not going to be putting flies in with Diego's enclosure. It'll just stress him out and all that sort of stuff. So I might just stick with constantly keep adding uh, tropical grey isopods or um, springtails, that sort of stuff. Obviously, they're not going to thrive in there. They're not going to really thrive at all in there. God, there's loads of mealworms here. Yeah, so I might... They're not going to breed very well. So I might just end up having to um, keep topping up that colony in there. Um, there we go. I'm just trying to... The joy with breeding your own live food. You can physically go through your colony and self-select as the exact ones that you want, which is what I do. Buffalo beetles in the... Oh, do you know what? I really, really 
want an Aki monitor, not just a Mac Aki monitor. I was looking into a, a group of Aki monitors and I've only recently started to look into that. Basically, what I'm trying to do is this year, early in this year, Hugo's enclosure down there. Obviously, he's going to be getting his full time enclosure, which is going to be a full length of the wall in the reptile room, which is going to be absolutely amazing. But what do I do with that enclosure when it's done, when he's moved? Now, I had a couple of ideas. I could do an absolutely mammoth sized bearded dragon enclosure, the arboreal, sort of the trees for him to climb on, the different basking areas. It's going to be a challenge with the heat gradients and stuff like that. But that would be a good idea for him. And then I was thinking, hold on a second, I could get a Tegu. And then the thing up with Tegus, I love them, they're absolutely amazing. But the information out there doesn't tell you the true story of a Tegu. I'm talking the Argentinian Tegu, so your black and whites and stuff like that. Not your Colombian Tegu, so not the, um, what the, yeah. So um, what a lot of people don't tell you is with Tegus, they sleep all day. The only real time you're going to see them awake and really active is during breeding season. Obviously, you can get them out to play and all that sort of stuff. But I like to see an animal's natural behaviours come out within the enclosure. I want that slice of nature in, in my house. Now, if a tegu sleeps all day, it's not really, enter, not really um, the sort of... It's not really that entertaining. I'm going to say entertaining. That's the wrong word. I can't think of a correct word to use for it. But you get the gist. Um, so I was looking into Aki monitors and I would love, I don't know how whether a group of Aki monitors, so a couple of females and a male, and just like they would do in the wild, and just to see all their natural behaviours coming out in a fully naturalistic setup, that would be absolutely amazing. I've been looking into them for a few years now, um, because I had a choice of either Hugo, a Tegu, or Aki monitor, and I went with Hugo. So it might be time for me to go into the Aki monitor sort of stages. It's, if, if there's any time to do it, now's the time to do it. But do I want to do it? Or do I want to create a huge enclosure for the bearded dragon? That's the sort of... Oh, or I can create... No, I'm not going to go down the line of um, a big naturalistic colony of leopard geckos. Imagine that, putting food in there and they just all go mental for them. <laughs> but maybe um, a six foot enclosure might work for a, a couple of females and a male Aki monitor. Which is something I've been looking into, like I've just said. I'm getting quite a few mealworms out of this. Oh, I've missed a load of... Um... It's a great idea, Peter, that really is. That's the way I'm working. That's why I've not got as many as I used to have. You look at my uh, reptile room tours from two years ago, and it's... the animals I had then compared to what I've got now is mental. But I want to be able to provide the proper care, the proper naturalistic, bioactive showcase sort of enclosures for these animals normally popcorns come out of that little corner now and he hasn't yet so that's really disappointing I, I yeah i would love aki monitors because it's just they're so active that's what i love about them but i mean if i'm going to go for the group of them i'm, I'm still i'm still doing my research i will say that i'm still doing my research because one thing i've noticed with a lot of the care videos and this is something that I didn't understand at the start was um, the humidity. Everyone's like, oh, you've got to do it fairly high humidity. But aren't these Australian animals? You don't really need the high humidity with the Australian animals. Now, it turns out you need the humidity or not so much the air humidity. You just need to keep the substrate wet or moist throughout its layers so that it'll hold the burrows. That's where the logic come in behind it. So I'm still, like I say, I'm still learning. I don't know the actual full details of them. But I would like to hear everyone's experiences with Aki monitors. Because there was a time, 10 years ago, where they'd all come in the country. Before Australia stopped the export. Oh, God. Yeah, before Australia stopped the export of their native species. We had a lot of wild courts coming in. Obviously, now they've protected their species. We're just starting to get um, a lot more captive bred. But it's still quite rare. I still can't. Then again, I've not actively been out there searching for them. So, um, I don't know how hard they're going to be to find, but I'd imagine quite hard. Got a fair few in there. Oh, Peter. Oh, Peter. An Asian water monitor. Wow. 
I had the chance only a few days ago to play with a baby Asian water monitor and it was this big. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Four foot by six foot by 18 inches for your crested gecko. Ah. I would, see now with the bigger enclosures with the crested geckos, the, what I found, because I did have a big enclosure for my old crested gecko, um, I found it best if you put two or three different feeding stations within that enclosure, just so you always know it's got food. The problem with doing that now is don't you can't just chuck live food in there when you want to give it some live food because it just won't find them. You like your crickets will go in there, they'll chirp and chirp and chirp and chirp, and your crested gecko by the time he gets to them just won't be able to find them, and it just causes a lot of havoc. So you end up having to tongue feed. It might be worth training your gecko to tongue feed before you put it in the bigger enclosure. Remember somebody said earlier about allergies. Oh god, this is starting to get up my nose now. But I want to get a fair few because I want to feed some to Diego tomorrow. Plus it's quite therapeutic and I'm getting to know you guys. When I'm good enough to actually check the comments, which is a good idea. Nah. Alright. Tortoise Tarzan, have you got Aki monitors? Oh, um, from what I've, I've heard loads of con conflicting... Um, information about Aki monitor enclosure sizes some say simply go as big as you want because they're a highly active animal which is something I'd recommend go as big as you possibly can but some have said oh they only need a four foot enclosure for an, for an animal that's that active I'd say no nah, as big as you possibly go four foot just seems too small for an Aki monitor but then again like I say you get people that want the animal um, to show off the animal and then you get people that want to have the animal and the full enclosure. So you've got all the, all the plant life, the naturalistic settings, uh, all that sort of stuff to go along with the animal. So it depends what you want. You can have the animal or you can have the full slice of nature. If you want the full slice of nature, go for the uh, biggest, most elaborate sort of enclosure you can possibly have. I think for an Aki, which is why I've got this six foot here. I mean, it's quite tall as well. I mean, it's a three foot tall enclosure, so I'll be able to get some sort of up in the branches, all that sort of stuff going for the, for an Aki. <coughs> oh, God, this is starting to get to me now. Oh. I wonder what I named three Aki's. Because that's what I, I was looking at. Because Aki monitors are one of them where there's not that many around in the industry, so. Um, might be a nice little project to uh, have a little breeding thing going with them. I don't know. Like I say, I'm still looking into it. It takes years of uh, research and learning to get everything perfect for an animal. And even then, you ain't going to get it perfect the first time, are you? Right. Oh, there's one. That's all the... Uh... No, I need more than that. <laughs> Jungle carpet pythons are beautiful. Yeah, Lewis, I have got um, your message, but don't worry, I've not, I'm not ignoring you or anything. I'm actually f live and filming on my mobile phone, so um, I can't check your message or anything yet. But while you're here, Lewis, I've got um, your. I know you've just picked up a millipede, haven't you? I want to know if you know the sex of it because I've got my big millipede. Check this out. Big ass Rexy breeze that I've got to build. <laughs> I've got my big millipede in that tub there. Do you know what? Let's see if I can get it out. Let's move all the stuff off the top. Oh, I was looking for that yesterday. Oh, do, do, do. There's my big millipede. Is he the same as that? That one is um, female, so I mean, if you've got a male, we can pair them. But that's not for right now, obviously, that's for future times. I've got this dude here. Oh, I can't see him, he's 
the reflection is just horrible. Let's see how Popcorn's doing. Is he still over in that back corner? Yep. See this mark here? That was him. He struck at the glass to come and get me one day. And he marked it. Pain in the butt. He's done it there as well. This is what I mean. He's got too aggressive. But hopefully if he comes out of that corner while we're filming, I'm going to try and get him out to see if he will actually come out. We don't know. He might. To be fair, I might open the glass on one side and see if it attracts him to come over. That'll be interesting as well, to be fair. Let's have a look. Some comments have just popped up. Let's have a look. I've been thinking about a tortoise as well, if I'm honest. I don't... I don't... The thing I don't like about tortoises, and the reason I've not got a tortoise now, is I can't guarantee the proper care for that animal for its entire life because that animal is going to outlive me. And I'm not comfortable with that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can pass it down, I can teach somebody to look after it properly and stuff like that, but I can't physically care for that animal for its entire life. Yeah, I've heard they're quite bad to assemble and stuff like that. That's been in pieces now for nearly a year uh, since the Northern, uh, the Northern Invert show last year, or this year. But yeah. Yeah, I could give it to my son, but then that's me buying something for my personal, for me, and then forcing him to have it. And I'm, it just doesn't settle with me too too much. Um, yeah, leopard tortoises, like I say, I've not dived too deep into tortoises, simply because of that reason. Now, if I do start diving into it, then I'm going to want one even more. And it's going to be absolutely horrid to actually physically try and get them. <laughs> I do like chameleons, I'll give you that. I do absolutely love chameleons. But I want to go for the more obscure species. I mean, there's a gentleman not too far from me who captive breeds Jackson's chameleons. And I'm talking F2 captive bred. So the parents, the grandparents were the wild caught ones. Because near enough, all the Jacksons you see in the UK these days are wild caught, which is horrendous. But it, it does happen. I'm surprised that sort of stuff does happen, to be fair. But then again, the majority of the invertebrate kingdom, that is um, wild caught these days, isn't it? I mean, I'm quite lucky. The majority of my animals, if not all of them, are... Um, I can guarantee every tarantula, every invertebrate that I've purchased with my money is what is uh, captive bred. But there's a few that I've been given that I, I don't know their sort of... Um, Backstory, I don't know much about them at all. Where's... Oh, there we go. As if I'm still sat here trying to get mill... If anyone's wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to uh, get some mealworms out of my mealworm farm. Because I've got to give the leopard gecko some mealworms. And uh, I want to get a load spare for Diego in the morning. I don't normally give Diego mealworms, but he's not had them for a while. So it'll be a nice little change for them. Obviously, they're not absolutely perfectly healthy for bearded dragons. But it's a nice little change for him. He can have either class as a treat or something. I'm not 100% sure. but God, this is really... <coughs> I don't know why I keep putting this down and picking it up again. Because it's the same all the time. Yeah, that's me. I'm done with, the, uh, with them for now. Go get some calcium and feed these off to um to it's, I, I say we're all we're gonna feed them off from like it's some big deal, but it's really not because I just pour it into their bowl, in all fairness. Oopsie daisy. Ah oh. Oh, I've got a fair few in there. Uh, yeah, I'll give these goat girls a big meal today. I'll tell you something I've just learnt about calcium. Let's attract their attention. Let's see if I can get the camera off. So I'm hand holding the candle. 
Oh. Are you going to go for it, Donna? This is what I mean about her eyes. Because it's quite light out here, she can't really see. Plus, there's an awful lot that are actually in there. Oh, there we go. Right, let's just grab one. One of the big ones there. There's a big one there. If I can get it up. And we'll drop it. Where is Millie? I can't see Millie, so we'll just drop it straight in the middle. Just see if... Uh, God, she's really uh, attacking them. The life of a mealworm. I'm scared to put my fingers in in case she comes out from one of the hides and gets me. I can't wait to get these girls back on bioactivity. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. Found her. So, with her being up there, sorry guys, I am holding the camera. Where, where is it? Always. Again, guys, I'm going to have to mess around a little bit here because I need my other hand to uh, I've made her work for these ones. These water bowls are meant to uh, stop the mealworms from escaping. Look at that face. If you're enjoying it guys hit that thumbs up button just because why not All right. I'm gonna leave them there for a second grab the rest and head over here look at him he knows he knows <laughs> All right. Look at him, he knows. Do you know what, mate? I'm going to give you quite a few today. Because it's big feed day. Why not? Whoa! Yep, that's amazing. Alright, I'm going to put him back in. Actually, what I'm going to do is... 
do. I've just felt something that I'm not 100% happy with. Let's close that for a second. I just had a feel of his heat map and it's not exactly as warm as what I would expect. Hey, guess what guys? Popcorn's coming out for a stretch. But she's gone underneath that log which is going to make things blooming hard. Temperature gun. Like I say, I check it very, very regular. But this didn't doesn't seem what it should be. So let me lower the step the tripod down and I'll bring you along with this little journey. You just get that inkling sometimes. So I'll spin you around. There we go. So you can see that piece of black down there. That's the actual heat map. So Oh, 87, 86, that's not terrible, but that heat has got to go through this tub, so I bet you any money the temperature's not right in this tub. 80. Don't know how well you can see, oh, 84, 85, 86, so what I'm going to do, and this is the joys of thermostats turn the thermostat up by two degrees <coughs> you see the thermostat just there guys it's just a pulse proportional thermostat turn it up by a few degrees and then I'll come back and check it in around about 10 minutes or so and just keep on top and checking it and checking it but that's why you should always check because stuff like that happens while we're there I'm going to check all the other heat mats. I can't wait to get all these animals on the heat mat. Perfect. But, they're both having a feed now. They're amazing, they really are, I love them. But, there is, it's not all good in the Northern Exotics house. We have got a tarantula in there that has come to the end of its life a few days ago, which is very, very unfortunate. I do have to go in there and get that out. Let's have a look over on the superworm farm. Uh, none of them have pupated into pupa yet. Is that? No, that's not. But that's on here simply because the temperature. I don't know why I'm checking the temperature now. His bulb's not even on. <laughs> the dubias are all settling into their home. Can't even see any. But oh, there we go. There's a load having their food. It's just all in all, everything going as planned at the moment. Uh, Charlie's not out, so I can't really show off Charlie. All the isopods are there. Eh, just having a good old natter and I've run around, aren't we, guys? I love these plants. I can't wait to get them into their sort of, into their proper lighting and stuff like that. I've got to move them over to the window ledge just to give them the correct lighting. But do we think popcorn will come out for a play? There's only one way to find out. Bear with me because I've got to adjust the tripod legs all the way. Ooh. Sorry guys. <laughs> so, I'll just go and get the snake hook. So bear with me. So, let's have a look. What can we do to do this a bit better than normal? Which side of the enclosure shall we go in from? If we're going from this side, and just see how it goes. Like I say, he's not been the best. See what I mean? Instantly he starts looking. But, let's see. 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. Right. As soon as I go near him, bang, he's stuck. What's on his nose? Nah, that's just normal. As soon as I go, so now I have to make him realise that I'm not food. And it just takes time. You can see his tongue is... I was trying to zoom in on his face so you can... It's all about reading the snake itself. So you'll see his tongue's going nice and gentle, nice and slow. That's not good. He's eyeing me up. See, when it stops like that, then you know he's looking at you. He's thinking, whoa. But as soon as I put my hand in the enclosure, watch what he does. See what I mean? He's coiling, he's getting... He, he knew I was there straight away. So, thanks for coming in, Peter. I really appreciate you. Right. Right. Are you going to be good, mate? Are you going to be good? Right, do you know what? No time like the present. Shall we just open your uh, glass? No? You don't? Alright. Please don't get me. I'd appreciate it if you didn't get me. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop being a dick. Stop being a dick. Alright, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Pillow. You can't get me if I've got a big ass pillow, mate. Oh Christ, can I touch you without you attacking me? See mate, I'm not food, I'm not, stop coiling up, stop coiling up, I'm not food, I'm not here to get you, I would like it if you come out from underneath that branch there buddy, stop it. Stop it. Right. It's getting a bit antsy, so I don't really want to do much more. It's all about just getting him used to me, getting him used to touch, letting him know that I'm not food. And just keep working every single day to try and get him back to being handleable. Let's see him again. Come on, out from behind this log. Come on, mate, you can do it. Come on. Right, right, right. Get in there. Get in somewhere now, guys. Where's his tail? There. Right. Tail out, tail out. Right. Can you please get yourself... Hello, people. Get yourself from the other side of that log, mate. Because I really want to handle you, but I can't handle you if you're tangled up. Oh. There you go, guys. Just so, so I've got her out from the corner. Or I've got him out from the corner. But he's tangled up in that log. He's underneath it. His body's over it. I really could do with him getting out from that log. But it doesn't look like he's going to be doing it. So, <clears throat> what am I going to do? First off, I'm going to get the phone off so I can show you a clearer picture of him. Because he is absolutely stunning. Just look at that. He's absolutely beautiful. But again, his tongue's not flickering. He's not very happy. And he's tangled up in that goddamn log. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and pick the whole log up. That might help. Right. So. Let's get this on here. Get it zoomed out. Nice wide angle lens. Rick Malto. Hey. Uh, whoa. Ohio. Thanks for coming and joining in. Thanks for being a subscriber. I really appreciate you. But we're going to try and get popcorn for a bit of handling. Uh, for those who have just joined in, Popcorn has become unhandleable. For a number of reasons, really, but mainly because I've not really worked with him too much. He's just become very defensive. Mainly food-orientated, I would imagine. But he's not letting me get, get him out ever lately. So I really want to try and get him back to being handleable. Because that would be amazing to have him out around disabled children or old people, if I take them to the old people's homes. 
and I would love to do that with him but he's not letting me so I'm just sort of working on him right now and I'm hoping now is the time when I would be able to handle him live on here for the first time so I've got to try and shut this door across now I'm going to try and go in from that side and take this branch out so I can take this branch out because at the minute it's tangled up around the actual branch but every time I put my hand on the glass he's going to try and go for me I'll zoom in on his head so that you can acti actively see what he's going to do um, I don't know why you can see it there or anything but oh you didn't do it do I have a big glass it's can be a pig to close at some at times. Right. Who's from uh, Nottingham? Woo! UK, can't beat the UK. Best thing ever. Uh, da, 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 da. Victoria Elizabeth, you're from the same town as me. What town are you from? And I'll let you know how hot or cold you are. Right. Let's try this from a different angle. This is quite fun because last time I actually opened that side of the glass, it fell in. So, um, because it's very stiff on this, this corner down here. Uh, I think the wood might be expanding a little bit, so it can be quite tight. Just work it gently. Yeah, it's not coming out. <laughs> This is what happens when you get a load of dirt in the runners. Right. So I don't know how well you are all going to see this. Let's have a look because I'm curious about that town. St. Helens. Woo woo. Red up there you are. Red up. But what part? No, actually don't, don't say what part of St. Helens you think I'm from. And also, how did you know that? I am quite curious on that. So my plan is to get um, popcorn out and potentially put him down on the floor. So if I do get him out, there's going to be a time where you guys aren't going to be able to see me. But I will adjust the camera straight after. So what have I got? I've got the snake hook. And I've got a pillow between my legs just in case he decides to take a pop at me. And then uh, I'll move my work shoes out of the way. <laughs> If you see me around, pop over and say hi. If you want to come look at the animals, feel free. Just give us a shout. Right, are you ready, Popcorn? Because this isn't going to be good for you. But, come on. God, you're heavy now, get. Come on, mate. It's like a giant snake hook, mate. Whoa, he's not very happy. But he's out. He's out, guys. The joy of a boa constrictor, they can really hang on when they want to. But, he's out. Right, let's try to start working with him. Where have I put my snake hook? I should really have known that. Oh, it's in my other pocket. No, it's not. Ah, where have I put my snake hook? This isn't good. Shouldn't be this blooming out. But, that's a good point, actually. Where? Oh, it's in the enclosure. Huh. Right, let's move the camera so you can have a look a little bit better. Oopsie daisy. So, there's popcorn. The first time in about three or four months he's been out of the enclosure. Now the question is, can I safely handle him? So I've got my snake hook. This is basically, I was going to make this as a video. Uh, how to handle sort of aggressive snakes but he's not aggressive he's keyed into me at the moment you can see every time I move behind the camera his head moves to follow me so see what I mean he's following me loads so what I'm going to do is do you know what I'm going to try and do it with my bare hands to start with let him get used to everything first where's his head there it's only me mate it's only me mate Nice little gentle stroke. Come on, I know you don't like it, but you need to learn. Right. He's doing good so far. He's, he is doing good so far. Let's try and get a zoom in. Oh, that was too much. Wait, oh, too far out. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, 
You ready? No, dude, I just want it sorted. I know you're holding on for your life, but you don't need to, fella, okay? So can I have my stick back? I've got to put it in your enclosure, mate, come on. But I can tell you one thing, he's definitely using his muscles down there. Yeah, it's gone. There we go. It's all about nice and slow and gentle. Gotta love carpet pythons. Good morning. It's actually evening here. It's got to be about 11 o'clock in the evening here at the moment. But if you've just joined in, <coughs> Popcorn has become very defensive over the last few months to the point where he won't let me get him out. Tonight live, I've been trying to get him out, and this is it. We've got him out so far, but he just won't let go of his branch. <laughs> but I'd love to handle him if he'll let me. Right. Let's move you over this way so that I can get to you a bit better. All right, go on, go on, go, 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 go. You're not supposed to be going up the branch, mate. I'm trying to get you untangled from the branch. <laughs> but then again, if his head's up there, I'll be able to get ready to get to his body down the bottom. I don't even need the snake hook. I don't know why I've got the snake hook. He's not showing any threatening signs. Come on, mate. Watch what's happening with this branch, because I don't want him to get caught at the top. There we go. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Right, right, right. Here we go. Here we go. Can I? Right, back with the snake hook. Move that like that. Right, right, right. I've got his... I've got him. I've got him. Can or will you let me hold you, mate? Will you let me hold you? No, you're fighting me, mate. You fight. I know you're fighting me. I know you don't like it. You can help, mate. You can have. No, but you've done good so far, mate. You've done good so far. Sorry, I'm not talking to you guys that. Oh God, you can't even see. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Right, you're gonna let me have a go at. Um, Trying to support your body. Oh, don't grip onto the new log, you don't. It took us ages to get you off that log. Why are you circling it again, mate? Why are you doing it again? You know, if you circle up there, the stick's just going to go tits up and you're going to end up on the floor, mate. Come on. Don't, don't look at me in that tone of voice, woman. But it's done good so far, guys. This is the most, I've, the most progress I've got with him so far. Um, I wouldn't say all snakes, I'd say some snakes. This is popcorn, obviously he has become defensive. Look at him, he's coiled all the way around it, you donk. I spent ages getting you wider, I can just... I suppose I can handle him like, he would, like I would if he was a venomous animal. Where's his head? Come on mate, I've got you, you're safe. Mate, I'll just treat, treat the stick like it's a snake hook for you, dude. Don't boop your nose, you douche. Plus, this is a great muscle workout for him. Attaching, uh, gripping hold of that stick, using his whole body weight to... At Look at it. It's a great muscle workout for him. I don't want to keep him out too long because the heat isn't exactly perfect in this room for him. I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually. Just to save, if I do get bit, I've got my jacket. 
and I'll whack that on just to cool my arms. So if he does bite, it's not going to be the end of the world. The end of the world as we know it. Right then. Popcorn. Are you ready? Where's me hawk? I'll tell you one thing, this is the most I've seen him move for a while. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, Popcorn. Sorry if you can see me butt crap, guys. Should we just get you back in your enclosure, dude? Is that all you want? Is that all you want? There you go. Must admit, he is a beautiful animal. Even if he is defensive. But like I say, he's out of the enclosure. I wish he'd get off the stick so I could properly handle him, but you got to do what you got to do, I suppose. And plus, he's wrapped around it that much, I can't even just pick the stick up and put him in that way. Can I, mate? I'll tell you one thing. He is beautiful. Very powerful as well. Actually, I wonder if he'll just walk off. Sorry if I keep walking into the camera. I wonder if he will just wander off thick and then I can just grab him that way. I don't know. Let's have a look at some of the comments while he's having a stretch. not working. Popcorn's uh, four years old now. You ready, Brian? Come on. Come on, mate. I need you to have you out. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carpet Python, amazing advice. That's what happens when you get bit by a snake enough times. You get a bit nervous. She says, stop being so nervous. He knows I'm nervous. He's not defensive. He's just, he is normally defensive because he's only striking at me. I can never normally get him out of that enclosure. But it worked. So carpet python, you're amazing. Huh. It's gone straight into the uh, pipe at the back. Huh. Right. Let's get his stick back in that I've got out. That was amazing. I can turn this heater off now. There we go. While you're here, Carpet Python, because you're the perfect person that will probably know this, obviously you're Australian, I've been looking into Aki monitors. I've been looking into them for years, like, but I know there's laws about them not exporting Australian animals out of Australia anymore. What's is that true? How long has that been going for? Could you give us a bit of a bit of knowledge on that? Obviously I don't want a wild caught Aki monitor. But what are they like in their natural habitat and all that sort of stuff? They're absolutely look at him. He's gone in the tube and back out the other side. <laughs> That's amazing.
10 years? So it's been like that for 10 years. Wow. I knew there was some sort of law there, but I didn't exactly know exactly what the law was or anything like that. And I know there's a lot of people moaning about it as well. There we go. There's that shot and him looking amazing. You can only keep native animals. Is there not a license you can go for to keep non-native species, or is it all to do with um, in invasive? You don't want them. To, you don't want them to be invasive in your country. I know, like the Burmese python, you have to have license to keep that if you live in Florida. <laughs> yeah, crickets are noisy. <laughs> oh God, they really are noisy. That's what I'm thinking, is it because of invasive species? But you can't keep non-native at all. No licenses or anything. Jesus Christ, that's strict. But I must admit, in Australia, you do have some nice animals. I think everyone's scared of ball pythons taking over the world. They've already taken over the hobby. <laughs> No, I was just fascinated by um, Australia, and I don't really get that often of a chance to have a good conversation with someone from Australia, hence, gotta love carpet python, is Australian, so perfect person to ask, and plus she's got some amazing collection. Here he goes, he's having a good old run around. A super dwarf retic. Not something I've really looked into. I mean, I look into I'm look, the ones I'm looking into at the moment. I mean, my dream species. I've always had a bit of a, a love for um, Aki monitors, so they're the ones I'm look, sort of looking into at the moment. Um, I'd love a tegu. Look at him poking his head out down there. <laughs> Hiding away, the grumpy old kid. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, I've, I've been looking into Aki monitors for quite a while. I've been looking into Tegus, but the Argentinian Tegus, not the Colombian Tegus. Um, but they sleep too much for me. I'd like to have a bit of entertainment, so to speak. Um, I'd love to see a bit of activity, a bit of active sort of behaviours. Um, I'd love to have a mangrove snake. Proper. But then again, right? I'd love the, I love the contrast between the yellow and the black. And I love the fact that they're, they're rear vang venomous. And I love the fact they're a bit edgy as well. So you can make a really beautiful enclosure and not really touch the animal too much. But you can see a lot of their um, natural behaviours come out. I can show my um, bearded dragons enclosure. However, please keep in mind, it is like sort of 11 o'clock at night in the UK. So his lights are off. But And his glass needs to clean. There he is, fast asleep, if you can see him from the reflection, obviously. Let's see if I can zoom out a bit, actually, because it seems... There we go. That's his enclosure. There he is, just there, fast asleep on his cold side. I need to clean that glass. And, yeah, full natural rock work sort of background. He loves that new basking spot that I've put in. Basically, just a big exoterra hide. I figured that'll absorb a lot of heat and give the heat out throughout the day. I like belly heat. And it seems to be really working. He loves that. Oosh. Oh. Ah. Wrong way. There we go. Ah. Oof. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, I'd love a mangrove snake. But I also really, really love green tree pythons. Some beautiful localities half green tree pythons that I absolutely love. I saw a yellow tree python once as well. But considering I'm much more of a lizard guy than a snake guy, uh, there's quite a few snakes that I actually want. Oh, God. <laughs> Just sat on my snake hook. Got a pick up my ass. Ah. Right, you guys are too high up, so I'm going to lower you down. So you can see me a bit better. 
I don't know how much longer this stream's going to go on for. Probably not too too much longer because I've got. It is getting quite late. But I figured I'd pop on and say hi to you. <coughs> yeah, I've heard a lot about green tree pythons. Uh, like I said, it's another species I've been looking into for years. Not deeply, but I mean, I know where they're from. I know a few of the problems they have. Um, and I know a lot about that. There seems to be an awful lot of wild caught out there. And I also know there was one that I was going to buy from one of my local um, pet shops. One of my local reptile shops and um i've been looking i was looking at it when he first got it and i was like oh, 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 oh. year and a half later he got two year and a half later he's still got one of them and it's smaller than when he first got it in so that's deterred me from that i have seen a lot of to do with feeding problems where they're having to get a lot of stuff fed down their throat with the tube feeding and stuff like that uh, let's have a look at this then yeah the Paul Urban Constrictor, he's, he has got quite a few. He's got a decent collection as well. Laws on venomous keeping in the UK. Um, right, so there's a couple of different venomous um, sort of areas to touch on in the UK. The likes of rear fang venomous, where it's not a lot of venom, the, it's not a potent venom. The likes of your hobnose and your mangrove snakes, you're allowed to keep them perfectly fine. Anything else, literally any other venomous animal, that any other venomous reptile, because we can keep stuff like tarantulas and uh, centipedes, they've got a slight venom as well. We can keep them perfectly fine. Anything that I'm going to class as proper venomous, um, cobras and whatever, um, gila monitors and all that sort of stuff, you need what's called a DWA, Dangerous Wild Animal License. <clears throat> I went for a Dangerous Wild Animal License two years ago. I got refused. The bloke didn't even walk in the door. He just refused it straight away. And understand uh, at the time I was a, a bit annoyed, but it was understandable when I had sat back and looked into it. They are very, very picky over who does it, who has that license, the reasons why you have that license, and just all that sort of stuff. You need to have locked in double locked enclosures. So I need to have my front door locked, that door just there sealed and locked, fire escape style, and the actual separate room for the actual venomous animals. So there's just loads and loads of regulations you need to look into for um, venomous animals. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with green tree pythons with the care. That's why you need to do years of research into them to figure it all out. Uh, yeah, lots of babies, they don't make it. If I'm going to get another monitor, it's going to be an, an Aki monitor. I Don't get me wrong, I'd love a proper big Asian water monitor, but that's just not feasible at all for me. Ooh, let's have a look through the rest of them. Do you know what, mate? I had a reptile room, and now I've got a reptile flat. I've got those two enclosures. I've got Rosie behind you, this one just here. And that's just in the living room. I've got reptile room and I've got uh, my bedroom is a quarantine room. Um, it's just it's never ending. The hobby is so addictive. But like I've said many a times before, I'm sort of staying away from um, collecting animals and gaining more as in collecting knowledge. That's really key for me at the moment. Right, let's have a look. What? Can we do? There's loads of things I need to get done. It's unreal. I can't wait to get Hugo's enclosure massive. That's a point, carpet python. Do you have to have um, licenses for non-native dogs and cats? Or generic pets, as I'd call them. Yeah, everything's got to be escape-proof. If an animal gets out, or... If there's a problem, that, that door can be locked. But then that door's also got to be accessible as well. Um, if, say, the ambulance needs to get into it and stuff like that. So you can have any breed of generic pets, but you can't have non-native reptiles. What Would you have the same problem out there? Say you've got, like, would an Asian snake that likes the lower temperatures 
thrive in your Australian temperatures. You have to license pit bulls. I think we have to license pit bulls in the UK as well. Ooh, what rescues do you take? I've taken in quite a few rescues now, to be fair. It's got some sad news on one of the rescues that we did take in not long ago. She was never going to live a full life, bless her, but that's on a further video, I think, once it's sort of sunk into terms with me. Oh, right. Do, 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 do this. Have a look at this and that. Ah, right. I do you know what, rhino iguanas are beautiful, they can be very, very aggressive, and they can be very quick and bitey, but it's all, they've been sort of, they used to be a dream species until they became, um, I don't even know what the word is, showboated, so to speak. Nobody knew what a rhino iguana was two years ago. All of a sudden, bang, everybody wants one now. You can see where I'm going, but I like to stay out of controversy, so I'm not going to uh, mention too much on that one. <laughs> I, I used to have a corn snake, and do you know what? I wouldn't mind getting back into them, just because they're a bit more active and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Popcorn's active. He's gone back into that back corner. Huh. That back corner that nobody likes him being in, he's gone back there. Oh, well. He's having fun. I don't really see Rosie out too much either. She's um, she's always hiding away and stuff like that. I know what I'm going to do. I, I had to adjust the temp, the thermostat on the leopard gecko rack, so I can check that now. Where's me? There it is. This is the problem when you've got loads of stuff in the reptile room. Everything goes sort of missing. Right. That's good. Let's check it inside the enclosure. Sorry if you can't see me. Uh -huh. oh, poof. There we go. <laughs> cool. That's the reason why I'm sort of... Oh, there we go. Trying to sort of come out of the heat map sort of thing for the reptiles. Because there's just not a great heat gradient throughout the enclosure. Once you get out of that sort of heat mat area, that's it. It tends to sort of die off to room temperature. All the stuff we have to collect for uh, building bioactive enclosures. Look at all them. Spray foam, paint, glues, silicones, no nail. God, everything. Get the light off in there for now. Oh, but... Huh? Oh, he's having a stretch. Oof. He's looking amazing. And Butter looks happy too. Huh. Oh. That is me done for tonight, guys. Oh. I think I've about covered everything I wanted to do. And I even got to handle popcorn, which was amazing. So, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all of you guys, every single one of you. Um, this is the most viewers I've ever had on a live stream, so I appreciate you all. You're all amazing. Thank you for nearly 4,000 subscribers. I'm blown away by that every day. You're all amazing. Thank you.